Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 13th of August 2018 and the time has just gone 10.40 British summer time. Well, the, the story of the Turkish Lira is uh, the biggest story in, in the news uh, this, this morning. There was a major sell-off in Asian equity markets overnight. There's been a fairly sizable sell-off in European equities this morning and it's the same old story uh, of, of, the, of, the, kind of the, the crisis surrounding the Turkish Lira. Uh, overnight, the Turkish Lira dropped to a new all-time low versus the US dollar and other major currencies. Uh, but it has managed to roll back ever so slightly after the Turkish Central Bank announced it actually have an, an a liquidity injection to actually can ease things along in terms of the financial system. So the Turkish Lira is off the, uh, the lows of the session, but it's still taken a, 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 a battering of the last number of days, weeks and months. And it's, it's essentially the same old story from, uh, from Friday. Uh, traders and investors are very concerned that European banks, Eurozone banks, uh, have, have, have exposure to, um, to the Turkish economy and also to Turkish banks. And that could, that could lead to a scenario where, where we could potentially see write-downs from Eurozone banks or, or indeed uh, Eurozone banks using excess cash as a buffer to actually prevent, uh, kind of shield themselves from potential fallout from the Turkish crisis. And of course, if Eurozone banks are putting cash towards showing up their own balance sheet, that means they can't put cash to work elsewhere in the form of lending out loans, uh, mortgages, car loans, or, or short-term loans to, to customers. So that, that, that in itself would have a bit of a, a, a waning, a negative impact on the respective Eurozone economies. Um, taking a look at the, the week ahead, uh, the week ahead can be found on our, on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, cmc and then on the news and analysis section, you can find the week ahead article. Uh, today is going to be a fairly quiet day in terms of economic in indicators and corporate updates, but tomorrow is, uh, is quite busy and then it gets a bit quieter towards the back end of the week. So tomorrow, on Tuesday, uh, out of China, we have uh, retail sales and industrial production. Uh, also tomorrow morning, we have German and Euro Eurozone second quarter GDP. Um, on Tuesday and Wednesday from the UK, we have the uh, CPI figures and then also the wages and uh, unemployment data. Um, on Wednesday, we have first half figures from Balfour Beatty. On Thursday, second quarter figures from, from Davida. Also on Thursday, second quarter figures from, from, uh, from Walmart, owner of Asda. And on Friday, we have Europe, Eurozone uh, CPI numbers coming out. So taking a look now at a couple of the major markets and see how things have been, uh, been faring uh, over, uh, over the, the trading session. So the, the FTSE 100 has uh, is, uh, is been, it's been dragged lower. As you can see here, a couple of, uh, couple of sell-off yesterday, a sell from, as I said yesterday, a minute say Friday, a sell-off on Friday and a sell-off on, uh, on today's, today's session. But in the grand scheme of things, the FTSE 100 is holding up relatively well. Uh, the, the, some of the continental markets are in, are in far worse shape than the FTSE 100. As you saw here, the FTSE 100 hit a record high uh, in May, and we've been in a bit of a kind of downward trend or, or a sideways range since then. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that the FTSE 100 was at a, was at a multi-week high, but given what's going on with the Turkish crisis, we can see that the, the market's drifting lower again. To be fair, if while the FTSE 100 holds above this area here, in around the kind of 7,500 or the, uh, this, this area, this, this kind of price point here of 7,482. While we, we remain north of that, it's likely that we could see that the FTSE um, hold on to its gains and, and, and stay in, in fairly good shape. If you do manage to break below that level, 7,500 or 7,487, we could be looking at heading back down toward this area here. At 7,422, and if we go south of there, we could be looking heading that back down towards 7,300. But if we do manage to hold above um, this area here, the kind of say 7,500 area, we could be looking heading back up towards um, the recent highs of say just shy of 7,800 in around the kind of 7,790 or 94 region. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards the 7,900 area. Like I was saying, the, uh, the equity markets are in far worse shape than the FTSE 100. Uh, as you can see here, we had a fairly sizable sell-off uh, on Friday on the DAX, and then also we're, we're heading lower again, so we're back to kind of levels not seen since late June on the DAX. Uh, notice how the DAX uh, spent a very little amount of time above the, this red line here, the trendy moving average. So even though even when it did actually manage to retake the trendy moving average, which is kind of seen as a a fairly good barometer for whether markets are in, in, in good form or, or in weak form, it didn't spend much time above it, which is a fairly negative sign. The market fell back below, and that's been selling off aggressively in the wake of the um, 
in the wake of the trackage crisis. So the, so the DAX is, is heading lower. We can see a fairly steady increase in negative momentum. So the momentum is with the sellers, is with the, is with the bears. If it continues to drive lower from here, we could, we could, could look at heading back down towards 12,250. And if we go south of that, we could be looking down to the, you know, the late June low of in around 12,123. And if we go south of that, the big psychologically important 12,000 number could then come into play. If we did manage to bounce back from here, um, resistance could come into play in around this area here. Um, this particular line comes into play in around the kind of 12,600 area. And if we go north of that, uh, the next area to keep an eye for will, will be this red line here, the eternity moving average, which comes into play at 12,000. 752 and if we go beyond that we could be looking at targeting the july high and the late july high of 12,887 turning attention now to what's going on over in the united states uh, the s p 500 s p 500 has been dragged lower because kind of global sentiment uh, as a whole is fairly sour but in the in the in the, uh, compared to european equity markets the s p 500 is holding up fairly well so it wasn't that long ago that the S&P 500, only uh, at the beginning of last week, was uh, was at a multi-month multi high. It was at the highest level uh, since February. So, sorry, sorry, late February, early early January. So we're, we're talking about six, seven month highs on the uh, on the on the S&P 500. So it gives you a pretty good indication of, of how decent the market's been doing. We can clearly see here from uh, from early April, it's been a classic example of an of an upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Granted, we managed to have. Um, to drift, to drift a bit lower in the, in the last few sessions, we've seen a bit of an increase in negative momentum. So the, the move to the downside is being confirmed by the increase in negative momentum. So momentum is with the sellers for the time being. But in the grand scheme of things, the market has been in fairly good shape over the past few months. So even if you do manage to drift lower from here, support might be found in around the 2,800 area, a big psychological number. And even if you go below that, we could be looking at support coming to play at this area here, 2,791. Notice how it acts as both resistance and also support a few occasions uh, in recent weeks and months so it's in fair, so that area uh, could actually be fairly significant again in the near term and it's only if we head south of that we would like to actually see further losses uh, if the market hangs above holds above 2800 uh, we could see the market heading back up towards the recent highs of 2864 ish uh, and then if we go beyond that we could then be looking at retesting the all-time high yeah, back in, which was achieved back in January, uh, 2,877. I'll take a look at the Nasdaq 100 as well because it's, the Nasdaq 100 has just been, throughout over the last few months, has been one of the kind of better, uh, one of the kind of the, the firmer and stronger uh, equity indices. It's managed to kind of weather the, the storm of uh, geop the, the kind of geopolitical crises that we've, we've been going through, and it has been dragged lower by by the by the prospects, and now again by the prospect of a of a trade war with China. And it's also the trucker situation has, uh, has weighed, on, weighed on a bit, but it's held up relatively well. Uh, and, that could be, and that could be an indicator of where we could see traders look for tech stocks, given that they have a, they have a recent track record of doing relatively well uh, in comparison to others whenever there's sort of a, a geopolitical crisis taking place. So once again, the Nasdaq 100 has been in really good shape, uh, essentially since kind of mid-March, uh, kind of a classic example of, uh, of upper trend, higher highs and higher lows. It is worth pointing out, though, that the high we achieved last week didn't actually take out the all-time high, but it got quite close to it. We obviously had a couple of uh, sell-offs, a uh, couple of down days in the last few sessions. And so even if we do drift lower on the, uh, the Nasdaq 100, support might come into play at this blue line here at the 50-day moving average, which would come into play at 2,762. Notice how the journey moving average acted as support on a few occasions only in the, in the last few weeks. So it's been significant in the past. It could be significant again in the future. And if the market does look to continue its wider upward trend, we could be looking at retesting the 7,500 area and then going beyond that would obviously be kind of printing fresh new all-time highs. And if the more, kind of more all-time all -time highs that you print, uh, the more, it, more of an indication of how bullish the market is and the more likely you are to continue, continue on pressing other all-time highs because, as I mentioned, the market has been... Uh, in a fairly solid upward trend since the middle of March. Take a look now in the the gold market. The gold market has taken a bit of a dent uh, on the back of the the rally in the U.S. dollar. Um, 
the sell-off in the euro, the euro has been sold off uh, because of because of uncertainty that that eurozone could be exposed to Turkey. And then adding to that, uh, there's the general kind of fear that's surrounding global markets of prompt traders to buy what they deem to be safe haven assets, such as the Japanese yen and the US dollar. And there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between gold and the US dollar in recent months. So the stronger the, stronger the dollar is, the weaker gold is, and vice versa. As you can see today, gold managed to actually edge a bit lower again, and I should take out the low of July last year. So we traded, we traded down, down as low as nearly 12.02. So now back to a level not seen in gold since March last year. Has that given an indication um, of actually how weak the gold market has been? That being said, the kind of additional move to the downside we're seeing in gold aren't that high, which tells me that we could see a bit of support come into play in around the 1200 or 1195 area. The, the moves to the downside have been very kind of small and incremental. So the market it, it, it appears to be still in the downward trend that it's been in since April. But it's just not taking taking out those kind of massive major kind of moves uh, at a time. So we may kind of struggle. We may see some fresh buyers come to the fold in around the 1200 or 1195 area. But it's clearly in a downward trend. And if you do continue, to, if you do move south of 1195, we could be looking heading back down towards uh, uh, 1180. Any kind of moves to the upside in gold, like the run into resistance in around the kind of 11, 1115 or 1120 region. As I mentioned, I talked about we saw a very decent rally in the in the U.S. dollar in the in the last uh, couple of uh, last couple of sessions. Take a look now at the euro sterling. So we had a major sell-off in the in the euro um, only last only last week. Uh, what we can see here in in the euro is that it's managed to actually this area at um, 115.10, 115, which I think is a very decent area of support uh, in in recent months. But it managed to completely kind of smash through that. Uh, so we're, we're not kind of heading back down to levels not seen since July last year. So kind of over one year lows uh, on the euro dollar. So giving an indication of how bearish sentiment is on the euro at the moment. If we do continue to drift lower from here, we could be looking any back down towards the 112.50 area. Notice how that, that, that broad area region acted as a, a resistance uh, and back in June last year. So we may find some support coming come in at the one spot 12.50 area on the euro versus the US dollar. Any moves to the upside may encounter resistance in this, this area here. The old support could become new resistance. So we could see resistance come into play at again a 1 spot 15 or 1 spot 15 10 area on the euro versus the US dollar. And last market to look at now, the pound versus the US dollar. Sterling has been losing ground versus the US dollar since uh, since April. Steady classic example of, of a downward trend. Um, the market has been steadily moving lower. In recent sessions, the market has been pushing lower. There's been a steady increase in negative momentum, so the push load in the in the pound versus US dollar has been confirmed by the steady increase in negative momentum. So the momentum is with the sellers. If we do continue to drive lower from here, we could be looking at it back down towards one spot 25.90, a level not, not seen since um, since kind of mid to late June last year. Any moves to the upside in the in the pound versus the US dollar may run into resistance in around in around the, uh, the 120 128 area or perhaps even up high as that one spot 28 20 one spot 29 spot for apologies one spot 2957 if you, if you do see a bounce back in the pound versus the US dollar support uh, resistance may, may come into play in at one spot 2957 well that's all for me this week thank you very much